Welcome back to the Dao 8 Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Yang Zhuang Ming. Dr. Yang is the founder of Yang's Martial Arts Association, as well as YMMA Publishing, a leading producer of books and videos related to martial arts, Qigong, meditation, and related subjects. For several decades now, he's taught and promoted martial arts in countries all around the world and is responsible for introducing generations of students to Chinese martial arts. Dr. Yang, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for invitation. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, start at the beginning, so to speak. You you were born in Taiwan in a particularly difficult period of that country's yeah. history. Yeah, right. Because I was born a year after the war, and uh, after the war, I was a second child at that time, and uh, the the food is scarce because after the war, all the food supply economy so bad, the shortage, and it's chaotic in the Taiwan at that time. Because at that time, Chiang Kai-shek's party in mainland China is fighting against communists. So they didn't have any possibility to take care of Taiwan people, whatever. So Taiwan is chaotic and the economy is so bad, but the food shortage is uh, hitting. So I was grew up in that period. And uh, when I was a child, I was born in the village. The village about 800 people, around 800 people, all last names Yang. It's called Yang Family Village. Okay, but the Yang Family Village at that time, and the, uh, because uh, the village is next to the airport, is a military airport. By that time, Taiwan was controlled by Japan. And then that's why when American when joined the war, Americans start bombing Taiwan, the military mm. airport. And the Japanese, they will hide the cannon in the village to, to shoot American airplane. So American had to bomb the village. So end up uh, right after the war, probably nearly half of my my relatives got killed because of bombing. So when I was a child, one year old, my father moved to the city because they can, there are a lot of young people move to the city because they cannot, cannot bear their kind of sadness to see the relative parents get killed in the village. That's how I started. So when I was in, in the Shinzu towns, my, my father continued to have kids when I was, uh, Nine years old, actually, you know, 1953-54 Korean War, it just finished it. That, that also another hit because the economy started recovering a little bit, but that one because the uh, Korean War just uh, finished at that time. And Chiang Kai-shek's party was uh, get ready to contact uh, attack mainland China because China was not stable at that time. And I was about eight, nine years old at that time. And that time, my family already had nine kids. So night case with the uh, economy like that is a really, really bad situation. So it's the end up, you know, the starvation so there. So yeah, when I talk to people about starvation, it's all fasting. It's not fasting, it's starvation. Right. Yeah, that's because the, that's why the, the generally the also, it's not only me, my sister, my brother, generally also because you don't have a food. You can eat one meal a day, you're lucky. And uh, that's why that period is so bad. And uh, that also continue to bother me and from nine years old until 15 years old. When I was 15 years old, my friend introduced me to, to learn martial arts because at that time when you are 15, you can become very scared because people don't understand because uh, when we are 16, my generation, when I'm six, I was 16, not only me, men and women, when you are 16, you learn how to shoot rifle, M1 rifle, to kill or to be killed. Get ready for the war. Mm. So it's as simple as that. So because reason when you are 15, you are entering 16. So you know you can be drafted any time for the war. So that's why all my generation, everybody gets scared. So when you're scared, a lot of people just try to show they are no coward. They'll go out the street to bully other people, try to show how tough they are. And at the same time, I, I try to see also I'm I was scared too. So I try to think of how can I build my confidence. Can I face the, the battle of life and death? So that's why I say, well, maybe I should train martial arts to help myself or uh, learn this awareness. So that's why I, I, I'm looking for a teacher, but it's not easy to find a teacher at that time because not like, not like here today, you can go to martial arts school. There's no school at that time. All the teachers, they teach privately and there's no charge. There's no money relations between students and, um, and the teacher. They, they didn't. So because the reason is very hard. But fortunately, one of my friends called Chen Xiong, 
he he introduced me to this white crane master in my hometown and in the mountains. So that's that's how I start getting white crane. But when I get white crane, and then I'm very interested. But at the same time, I was afraid my parents against against my learning because a lot of kids after they learn martial arts they become the bad kids, become gangsters because now they only show they are no coward, they go to the street and bully the people. Okay, but the question is very simple. When I told my parents I want to learn martial arts, my parents said, oh, no problem, go ahead. And I was so curious when my grandma told me because in Young's village, 800 people, probably 600 people inside all the martial arts. Because in China, a lot of these family, they get together in ancient time because the bandit. When they come to rob a village, so village have to have a defense. So because of reason, learning martial art in the village, in the same family is common. So that's why today become young style, become Chen style, become Sun style. That's because all this village, they try to build defense capability. So that's why, because my father, my, they grew up in the martial art society. So they said, no, no problem, go ahead, learn this. So I was so happy. So question, when I trained for one year, yeah, about 16 years old, and uh, because of the stomach pain also, after five years, and then I sit in the corner, and I sit in the corner, um, and the cold sweat because of pain. And my master come take a look. I He measured my pulse. He said, you have some problem internally. I said, yeah, I, I don't know why, because at that time I didn't even know what is that. They just know when you eat, you have pain, you don't eat, you have pain. And uh, he said, maybe you learn Tai Chi Chen will help you to heal your internal organs. You know, at that time, you try to learn from the second master without permission of the master. That is impossible because that's considered betray because you reveal the secret to other styles. But that means my, when my master said that, that's encouraged me to find Tai Chi master to learn Tai Chi Chen. He say, oh, Tai Chi Chen can help you relax organs. So that's why I keep searching for the Tai Chi Chen master. And I find one, he's 29 years old. He's young, he's uh, in the high school. And the high school, so it is a, my high school is a gangster high school because I like to train martial arts. I, I didn't spend too much time studying against the high school. And the other high school is a very good high school. That high school, the master Gao is teaching there. So I went there and to early morning because we practice about six to seven thirty every morning. So I went there to bow to him, ask him to teach him. But at the same time, we have a five others, five other students all come from a good school. I was the only one come from a gangster school. So what do you think? So they treat me differently, but I don't care because I tried to learn amazing power. I learned how to lose up my low back and uh, from the gentle, very gentle spine movement, my torso start relax. When the torso start relax, and six months later, the also, the also start gradually disappear. After one year, also it's gone, and I was so happy. So I practice Tai Chi Chen. It's not because I love Tai Chi Chen. Okay, that's honest. I hate Tai Chi Chen. It's too slow. I was young. I want to jump. I want to kick. Whatever. But the question is, so you train that it will help me ease my also problem. So that's why I keep training because it's my problem. Then I didn't get, I trained with the Master Gao for two and a half years. So two and a half years, he helped me build a foundation of Tai Chi Chen. That's all the foundation I have, two and a half years with the Master Gao for the foundation. At that time, it's not like today. Today, you pay money, you go to the studio, and the master or teacher will teach you as fast as you can. So until you cannot even learn, cannot absorb, because you say, oh, you see, like a buffet. So today there's no quality. Everything you go there, the teacher said, keep teaching you, teach you, teach you. You don't practice. Not in that time. At that time, we we learn 10% of learning, 90% of practice. Today is not. Today's mentality is the 90% of learning, 10% of practice. After they learn, they say, okay, I'm Jedi. Okay, now what's next? That's today's mentality. So because reason, that's why quality is really bad because there's they never develop alertness, awareness, and the feeling of a martial art, they don't even know deep enough. So that's why, so when I when I learned at that time, still traditional way. So when Mas, with Moscow two and a half years, all I learned is a sequence and a, a few pushing hand, and that's it. And that's my foundation. I didn't know anything else, but that one is enough for my author. 
That's important. And pushing it, you need a partner. So when I went to college, in Tangwa College, see, at that time, I started learning long feast. But uh, I, of course, I got permission from my white grand master, from Tai Chi master. Because in, again, in 1960s, there's more open-minded. It's not like a more traditional, open-minded. And uh, then the, they say, okay, you want to learn, go ahead. So because long feast, a long range fighting. It's a, and uh, white grand short range fighting. And uh, I, when I get to the college, I have uh, friends, the classmates, he learned long fist with uh, Master Lee. And uh, one day we talked to each other. He know I learned white coin, I know he learned long fist. The first thing we say, okay, let's fight and see what's the difference. So we just push all the chair out to the corner in the classroom and we fought. After we fought a few times, I realized, gosh, his long range is good. His leg is fast. And when I get close to short range, he got trouble because my hand is fast. Because white crane is a southern style, is because they created to fight on the boat. So you, the place is narrow, so you cannot have a long kick, a high kick. So my hand is very fast. So at that time, then I asked him, say, can you teach me long fist? Because I love to know long range fighting. He said, no, no, no. You want to do it, then get my master here. That's what we both are fun at, at Tamkang College Kung Fu club, we call Wusu club. After we found it, we invited Master Lee come there, go, uh, go there to teach. So that's how I learned long feast. And end up, I practiced a uh, white crane with Master Sun for 13 years. But 13 years, actually, only the first three and a half years, I, I was with him almost every day. After that, I went to Taipei already. And the uh, Tai Chi Chen, I have two and a half years. And the long feast, I was in Taipei. Even I was a professor in Taman College, I still learning under Master Lee until I was 27. So I was Master Lee for eight years. Then when I was 27, 1974, it came to the United States. So, so that's a situation briefly of my, my child. You want to talk about detail? There are tons of it. It would be 10 hours to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so you can see with uh, Master Chin, he's a farmer. He's a farmer. So it's farmer, he didn't know how to read. He didn't know how to write. But to me, his a philosophy about life is beyond anybody I know. Okay, his fighting capability is also beyond anybody I know. Because he stayed 23 years with uh, Master Jin. Jin Sao Feng, that's his master. 23 years. Have you ever thought about stay 23 years with your master? Then that capability. But when I asked him, he said, how much are you compare with you and your teacher? He said, what I learned is only like this. Just blow away. <laughs> so that's mean he compared with his mother, he's nothing. Yeah, but at that time, you can see the martial arts capability, martial potential is so high compared with today. Today is most only the show business. It's show. Can you really fight? Not necessary. It can show, but you know, how beautiful you are, how how agile you are, but how beautiful you are, like a modern wusu, but can you fight? Not necessary, you can fight. Yeah, remember the in 1983, 84, around that time, the Black Belt magazine have a karate, Black Belt fighters, he wrote the article, he said, can karate fight? Can karate fight on street? He put a big no. The question, they see, because uh, when you spar in a training, it's not the same thing, it's a real fight. When a spar in training, you have a lot of rules, like uh, alternative fighting, a lot of rules. You can punch your face, you can kill the groin. So that's a great thing to just come in, take you and get you down. But you cannot punch your face, cannot kill the groin, then people can come in anytime to get you down. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the rules. It's already restricted application to against some technique. So that's the same thing. So in that reason, he... He fight on the street, on the street, people try to rob him. In one minute, he was knocked out. And uh, he was a six time champion of karate. He said, well, can karate fight? No, why? Because he built a habit. The habit do not protect the face growing because you don't have to in, in the sparring competition. But the question, when street fighter fight you, where they attack you? The face and the groin. Mm -hmm. So because the reason they say one is called sparring, uh, called Free fighting training is a sparring. The other one is real fighting. The real fighting and the friendly sparring is different. And the real fighting is talking about life and death, talk about injure each other on purposely. 
I mean, your competition is not, you're not trying to injure each other on purpose. See, that kind of mentality is different. But when I grow up at that time, again, you have to face that because you have to face because the people challenge you on the street. Yeah, because uh, the, everything chaotic. Yeah. It, it was the Taiwan was now peaceful until 1970s when Chiang Kai shek realized he couldn't contact, attack mainland China and start putting all the effort in Chinese eco Taiwan economy, education. Taiwan started to have a peaceful feeling. That's what, by that time, it was 1974, then I came to the United States. I came to the United States for my PhD. Hmm. Yeah, originally I got a, in the physics department at Purdue University, uh, but I check it, Purdue University, to finish a PhD, you need seven years average. I don't want to stuck there seven years. So that's why I switched major to mechanical engineering. But question, see, when I learned, it doesn't matter mechanical engineering or physics, everything is a core logical, rational, it makes sense, see? So those are things that make big difference in my life. When I do something, I learn something. Every technique I learn, it then makes sense. What this for? Because uh, you see, you learn physics, you always say, what is that? Why is that? How is that? Always talk about these three things. But once you know those three things, you know what is going on. Instead of just blindly in practice. Then that they build because physics and they build my 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 new concept about what to deal with a problem. Yeah, you know, what is that? Why and how? So since then, and I start use that three to ponder. Okay, then when I come to the United States in 1974, I didn't have teacher. I didn't have teacher. So when I look around, well, there are a lot of people teaching martial arts because Bruce Lee just passed away not too long. So everybody, as long as you're Chinese, they think you know martial arts, at least that's Jewish situation. So I even pay money because at that time, even to observe the class, you had to pay a dollar, but to me, a dollar is a big money at that time. Think about one dollar, two dollars. I still pay money, try to see what kind of thing they teach. And then after I look at it, they say, no, they, I cannot learn these things because a lot of bad habits, because at that time it's targeting for money making. It's not really to preserve the art. Then I was disappointed. He said, well, Chinese pass the martial art down to foreigners and it's all surface, then that's why they'll get motivation of uh, her writing. Then 1976, my master passed away. My white queen master passed away because he trained very hard, external style in the white queen. So I have an energy dispersion. It's well known in Shaolin Temple called Sang Gong. Okay. And they got high blood pressure, got stroke, he died. I didn't know because he couldn't read, he couldn't write. And then the, everything come from my family. I didn't know he passed away in 1976. In 1978, my first son was born. My mother came from Taiwan come to see me. And she, she told me, say, you know, your white queen master passed away two years ago. I was so shocked and said, I said, why you didn't tell me? My mom looked at me and said, what would you do if I told you? Because she knows I may quit school to go back for the funeral. Because all my classmates kneel in front of the coffin for the funeral. I was the only one missing. See, to me, that's very irrespectful to the teacher, but I was in the United States. But I couldn't answer. My mom see me, couldn't answer. He said, that's the reason I couldn't tell you. To me, your school is more important than your master funeral. So that's what feels sad. So in 1979, I went back to Taiwan. And uh, I asked his two kids to take me to his tomb. Right in front of his tomb, it just feel lost. You know, it's a hot summer, and we sit there for almost two hours. Right in the tomb, I think of the past. Every minute I learned from him since I was 15 years old. And uh, what, how much it influenced my life, because all his life experience about my life affected my life today. Yeah. So I wrote those uh, story he told us and the lesson he told us in my book about the uh, action of a Tao. Yeah, a lot of stories come from him. Okay, but from there I see in front of the tomb, I say, he learned 23 years from his master. None of my classmates, includes me, learn even half what he knows. 
And what happened? All the knowledge he took him in the graveyard. And I feel so sad because the knowledge disappeared. He cannot trace back. It's not like an antique. You can see it, but no, there's a knowledge. It disappeared. That's why I found the knowledge is the most important thing to be preserved on the, on the human society. It's not the antique, the painting, whatever. It's the most important the knowledge. That the knowledge experience of every individual human life. So after sit there for two hours and with his son and uh, I pound, I meditate. Then I swear in front of his tomb. When I come back to the United States, I will write down anything I know I learned from him. I will never let it get lost. That's why he opened my mind at that time. So I will come back in 1979. I start writing book. And the 1980 unique publication start publishing my book, the Shaolin China and the Shaolin Long Fist and the Tai Chi Chen and the, the Chinese Ancient Weapon. The unique helped me publish four books. Okay, so that one, how I started, but I remember at that time, my English is always the Chinglish. It's not really English because it comes from a different country. Even my talking today still have a Taiwanese accent. See, it's a Chinglish. It's not my kids that grow up here. They, they are really can speak English, write English like English, not me. So because of reason, I still take so much difficulty to write. But at the time, I, I pay my friends, my students, to help me edit my English. I have to explain to them what I'm writing, what's the meaning. And at that time, you know, like today, you can, yeah, you, can, you can typeset everything in computer today. Not at that time. At that time, you have to learn how to typeset and those things. But the first four book is not. First four book, I just give the script to unique publication, they do it. Okay, so that's the first four book they publish it. And then at that time, I realized one thing. You see, every book I write, then I know subject become deeper because I know how to analyze it. Because before I never tried to analyze every technique, for example, China, I never analyzed it. But now in order to explain that, I have to analyze it and try to see what's the logical sense, what is the best angle, whatever. And start modify what I learned at the same time. I write every book I write, I learn so much. I realize one of the best way to learn is really yourself. Because the knowledge is there and you have that brain to think. It's not from the teacher. You know, there's a famous uh, Tai Chi master, Zhou Zhonghua, in the Tai Chi form. He created Tai Chi form. He's a very famous mathematics teacher. Okay, when he was 68, he contacted me. He wanted to go to Tai Chi form to support. And the uh, in Taiwan, me, my wife, and all my generation learned, studied his mathematics book. So I say, are you the Zhou Zhonghua or the Zhou Zhonghua? He say, I am. Say, I say, okay, I come. My wife said, I come too, because we always uh, anxious to meet him because uh, he's so famous in Taiwan. He wrote 19 mathematics book. Master Joy told me, say, every book he wrote, he can buy a house. <laughs> but question, he didn't have a teacher. Because he was so famous in Taiwan, so he cannot find a teacher to teach him because of dignity or pride, or whatever. Mm. And I say, how come your book of Tai Chi Chen, your Tai Chi theory book from Master Zhou, is very deep, profound? I say, how do you know the Tai Chi is so profound? You didn't have teacher. You know what he say? He said, that's why. Because you don't have teacher, you have to dig it out. You comprehend yourself. When you have teacher, you rely on the teacher. You rely on the teacher, actually. Everything on surface, stay in the surface of a master level. You don't have a master, the knowledge is your teacher. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, let's also teach me a lesson. Say, I can teach myself, especially in 1980s, when I started writing book, a lot of uh, documents revealed to public. Yeah, the, the most amazing thing is the Qigong and Tai Chi Chen ancient documents that were hidden in the monastery and revealed. You can buy it. So when I went to China, at that time when I come back, a whole bag of a book, because they reveal it. I believe because of the Cultural Revolution. Because they during Cultural Revolution, they destroy so much of a book, so much of the in the monastery, all the secret. Then I believe by China, they realized in order to preserve the knowledge, it's revealed to public, don't hidden it. Otherwise it can be destroyed. 
-hmm. Yeah, so that's why all the knowledge, everything start revealed. I was so excited. 1980 to me looked like, well, I got to heaven because to my hand, I have so much information, impossible for 10 times of my lifetime to, to write it. So I started to collect information, like embryonic breathing, small circulation, grand signal. I start collecting information and categorize it. And from there, I have to go in and first one you collect information. And after you know, let's see, remember I went to Taiwan and to China. At that time, there's no internet Google search. Today you can find all those documents in Google search. Today is so convenient, everything. So at that time I I start. From the collection, I study, compile, through the compile, you have to understand because a lot of document is garbage. It's not all the documents because it doesn't make sense. So because reason you have to because that's why I tell the people say I'm a puzzle player. I'm only play puzzles. Every piece of information is a piece of puzzle for the whole thing. So I have to see which one is useless, which one is useful. So from there I figure out. Once I get 40, 50 percent of puzzle, I know what's going on. Because you got a half of information already. Yeah. Like a Chinese can read Japanese because the half of Japanese writing is Chinese. And Japanese can read Chinese. So the same thing, if I half, you know what they mean. So that's why it's from there I start figuring out. And I start to fill up the gap. Because I got 50% information, I still fill the gap and use a scientific way to interpret it. And why I feel up, why this one makes sense, why that one makes sense. Then after I finish every book, I finish it. My mind, no doubt, I I learned so much. So since then, writing is not it's not for money making. To me, because of my book, Learn Sell Good, it's a peak. You know, like a classical music. But the rock music can sell very good. No, it's not cooking book. It's not those kind of book. My book is is a profound, deep, but questions, classical music still people enjoy it when they reach their levels. But that one, when I write that kind of book, I learn. And when I write the simple book, I don't learn. I just share. So that's in my book. You can see some of them is a shallow, and some of them is deep. But the one I'm more interested in is writing deep book because I have to go through all the process. For example, the Qigong interpretation of Tao Te Ching, it took me 20 years. 20 years of ponder, I was hesitating to release it because I'm not the Tao Lao Tzu. I don't have his feeling. If I don't have the feeling, how can I interpret his writing with the right feeling, with the right? So because I hesitate <clears throat> until yeah. Until in the in the mountain in the retreat center, I said, "Well, I'm seventies. I'm going to die soon. If I take it with me, it will be like my master." So I just decided to really release it. But again, release it is still my understanding of Tao Ching still shallow. Okay, and uh, the same thing now. I re I released the Grand Securation book. Again, the document is a scarce because when people reach the Grand Securation for spiritual enlightenment. When they reach a stage, they don't bother to write. Yeah. It's more for selfish for themselves for enlightenment. They don't care about society anymore. So, so it's not too much documents. But I decided to publish it last year because I want to. I want to release whatever I know, in the, in, instead of take with me because you don't know when, because uh, some of my friends uh, suddenly, they're young suddenly, boom, one day they're alive, next day they're dead. Yeah, it can happen to me too. See, so because the reason I say, well, no, if I know anything, I reveal it. I don't, I don't hide it. There's no secret. So, so since then, because of their attitudes, then I learn, and I learn, and I learn. And then when I beginning, I'm more interested in the external style because the martial arts society is still hot. Everybody okay fighting, fighting, kung fu fighting, especially. Uh, after Korean, uh, after Korea, uh, not Korea, after Vietnam War, and the Americans, everything is a dignity, everything to fight hero, everything. You know, they want to prove they, they are not coward, whatever. You know, those are the martial arts go up. But now, 1980, 1990, the situation changed. People are hungry, peaceful. Yeah, then because today, people don't, they don't want to talk about fight. But unfortunately, still some group, yes, they want to learn how to fight. But 
that's the main thing. Because today, when I think, uh, when I think about the movies and the martial society, they try to promote martial arts. All they do is just try to emphasize killing, fighting. But those are people today they don't want. See, because the reason they got it wrong. Because martial arts, it's a martial, any Chinese martial art includes two sides of a practice. One side is a physical action, physical for defense. The other side is actually spiritually, inventory. You understand why Chinese martial arts, deep, of China, deep Chinese martial arts develop in the monastery. Taoist monastery, Buddhist monastery. They are monks. So that's why all the arts are defensive. It's not offensive. They don't emphasize kill people. They don't emphasize that. But defense, yes. But they use martial arts to train the capability of defense when they travel the country. But at the same time, they use martial training to discipline themselves to cultivate yourself, you understand? You want to develop your spiritual development. You have to challenge yourself. You have to face the dark side of you. See, mm -hmm. you have to face your dark vedas in within you. But you cannot face that. Now you can conquer yourself, see? Because there's a, through the training of martial art, that's, called, that's what I call Kung Fu. Martial art called Kung Fu, but Kung Fu is not necessarily martial arts. Kung Fu, we will take a time and energy to continue the endurance to, to do it. Okay, so that comes through, there's a self conquering. That's why the spirit continually evolved. Right. That's a part they should emphasize today. It's not the fighting part. Fighting part, yes, in the ancient time you need it, but today you want to kill people, you want to, you just get a gun. Yeah. You know, when I see Indiana Jones, the, the, the Arabian try to, he just put a gun to shoot him, and that's the end. Then you spend a whole lifetime training. No, you train martial arts for self conquering, challenge yourself. When you, every time you conquer yourself, your laziness, your persistence, all these things, once every time you challenge yourself, when you have the obstacles, your spirit grow. So, those are things you should emphasize today. Is for self cultivation, self discipline. Okay, from here, what you got? You got two most important things that my white queen master always explained. Why you want to learn martial arts? Yeah. It's not to fight. Fighting is a, it's only byproducts for defense. Most important, can you fight yourself? He said, you can conquer yourself, you can conquer the world, but you cannot conquer yourself. No, you're still your slave of yourself. So, because the reason, can you conquer yourself? He said that when you train martial art, there are two things, the most important thing you develop, alertness, awareness. Because uh, you come to this world to learn. Yeah, that's why the God, whatever, in the heaven provide us the sensing organ, the eyes, the nose, the smelling, the tongue, the hearing, whatever, the skin touch, all these things to collect information. But collect information is through the feeling. Okay, questions, how deep your feeling can be. He said, no, you come to this world, can you have two things, alertness, awareness. You have the awareness, you can, you, you know something people don't know. You have alertness, you can respond very quickly. When you look at today, all the successful businessmen, whatever, Bill Gates, whatever, that's because they have alertness, awareness. When they have alertness, awareness, you catch opportunity, you become pioneer. <laughs> So that's exactly martial arts just help you for that focus. It's not any other sports is capable to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about martial arts is a life and death. No alertness, awareness can be so high. Compared with the basketball, compared with the baseball, whatever, that alertness and awareness, yes, you need it, but it's not life and death. So it's different. But you can train martial art as a martial art but it's trained for internal, it's just to show people how good you can kill people. Then that is a supposed education should be. But the, unfortunately, the society all the emphasize, the no, no more bloody you have in the movie, the more you think you can sell. But people today is not the same. Martial movies now going down is not really as hard as 20, 30 years ago already. Yeah, because people's mentality is different. You know, 21st century, this century is a spiritual century. You think about last century, what's a human's mind? Here's my continual material satisfaction. Okay, in the 1960s, you have a TV, 
you have a refrigerator, you have a car. Gosh, you are a rich man. In today, look at everybody. You have a car, you have a refrigerator, you have a TV. You have, you have a luxury. You have so much things, material things. But you ask people, are they happy? No. The common suicide is more than ever. They are not happy. One thing, what's missing? Yeah. What's the meaning of life? It's not material size. See, that's because you understand, in this case, you understand what the Tao Te Ching they talk about. The Tao Te Ching talk about, is Tao Te Ching basic on the concept of the I Ching. I Ching 4,000 years ago, in China at that time, already recognized from the I Ching, there are two worlds coexisting. One is the Yang world, Chinese is called Yang Jian. The other one in world is called Yin Jian. Yang world is a material world. Yin Jian is a spiritual world. But Tao Te Ching, Tao is a spiritual world. When the spirit is manifest, the material materialize, that becomes the. So Tao Te is talk about these two worlds. These, these two worlds, so in the body, you see, the, my body is constructed by these two dimensions. So in my body, I have two lives. One is physical life, the other one is spiritual life. So two lives together. And the, today, people only talk about material life, then half the life missing. So when we talk about meaning of life, what? Is a material life or spiritual life? See, if we talk about material life, we miss half of the human life. So because reason, since I was 50, I started rec recognize that. When I start focusing in Tao Te Ching, I start understand, start comprehend from reading, comparing, whatever analysis, I realize, no, if I want to know my life, I need to know spiritual life. But question, how much we know spirit? None. You look at it, all the spirits have been abused. We talk about from the old religion, they try to interpret spirit. They talk about truth. Are they truthful or are they dogmas? The science talk about truth, and the, the religion talk about truth. Which one is more truthful? Tell me. See, because, uh, but the question is because religion has become so much of dogma now, and people, spirit have been in the bondage and cannot develop. Yeah. So because of the reason, that's why people start wake up. So that's why from the beginning of this century, you see people keep away from a lot of religions now, especially a lot of religions have a deep dogmas. Because now people are looking for something different. What they are looking for? Spiritual side. What is spirit? Yeah. But so I believe this century it becomes spiritual because uh, you see there's an in-world, young world. Young world, we already reach such a high levels, but in-world still low. It's a time now, this side too. You have to be in-world, young world, balanced. Otherwise, we have big trouble because uh, still we have 6,000 nuclear bombs on the earth trying to get kill each other. What is that? That's from material world. Okay, we are thinking about going to other planet. They try to, like an avatar, go there to conquer, to abuse the other planet. What kind of spirit? You think those aliens, they are much higher technology than us, they will allow you to go to their planet to abuse them? Of course not. So in the future, once a human can break the bondage, go to outer space, go to other planets, you see, it's going to be a war between alien and us. It's not the Earth. They're much higher technology. They are watching us. I believe you, you, you check the astronaut interview with the, the joints. Almost all astronauts say once they are in outer space, they are watched. Yeah. But they, we have been watched because they watch you, because they are high intelligent beings. They are not trying to conquer you, try to attack you. But human spirit is so low. When we go to other planet, we're gonna conquer, we're gonna kill whatever. So well, we are we are we are low spiritual species. So they have to watch us. I cannot, I cannot blame them you know, to protection. So, but question, if a human want to really get along with the other planet, the, our spirit had to evolve. If our spirit doesn't evolve to match material size, the human is going to continue to either kill each other or with our space. That's a future I can see so far already. Yeah, but we still talking about six nuclear, thousand nuclear bomb. What is that? Why? Why we need 6,000 nuclear bombs? If 100 already destroyed the whole human race, why you need what, 6,000? Yeah. Are we crazy? We are crazy. Yeah. So, because reason, in order to get this one, we have to get people high level of awareness, alertness. But unfortunately, most people, they don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. Yeah. 
only a small group, they're aware of that. But question, we had to bring people's attention because the power has come from people. People say, how oh, can we change it? You have the power, but question, all the people like a scent. People have to unite and become a concrete. When the human, all the people can unite. Yes, the policy have to change. See, but unfortunately, there is no force there to make it happen. So, so far, but I see more and more people awakening. That's what I see. Okay, so from here, you ask me a lot of questions. Let's see. Okay, then the retreat center, I build a retreat center. It try to try to preserve the art. After I teach in more than 30 years in America, I realized you want to preserve the art in the city, impossible. People come and go. And the relationship between you and the students is money. I pay you, you teach me. Simple as that. It's a treated like a merchant. So it, it cannot preserve art like that. So that's why I, I set up that 10 years program and take a group of students to the mountain to train. But the hardest part, difficult, the most difficult part is to find the right students, committed students. Not easy. Today's mentality is not the same. Yeah, you take them to the remote area to train them. Yeah, I took. Yes, I accomplished some, but is that the, to the certain level as I want? Not yet. So but I, I, I put the seeds down. So when the seeds down, I don't know if they grow. But I see some of them start grow, they start continue researching, and that make me happy. But a lot of them know. Because of today's, I don't know, today's kids is not the same mentality as when I grew up at that time. Okay, so, and the, the first few books when I wrote by myself in 1984, I started publishing my first book. I quit my engineering. Okay, because I realized after six years of the engineering job, I, I realized I was only a money slave. In money slave, you get money and fulfill your masters, whoever the dream. It's not your dream. It's somebody's dream. They pay you, you fulfill their dream. And it's not my dream. So I slowly wake up after six years, I quit. Because I quit. I got a good salary, but what? It's not my life. Yeah, I ask, I ask a lot of my friends, engineering, they got PhD, and now they are 70s. I ask them simple question, you know, now you're 60, 70, think about what is your life? They say, what do you mean about my life? I say, what your life? Your, your, your life. You feel your life. After the thing, you say, no, I don't have a life. Yes, because all your time for 40 years you do. Get up early in the car, go to work, and after work, go home, you're tired, and you sleep. Every day, every day, a weekend, you numb yourself, go to the party, whatever, numb yourself, and think you are in heaven. But no, you're a slave. Uh, after 40 years, you wake up, you waste your time. Me, after I quit, I fulfill my dream, I do what I want to do. I don't have a monkey behind my back, scratch me. See? So that's a, that's a different feeling. I'm See? Yeah. yeah, so. So and then so I when I quit, of course it's difficult because I lost my health insurance and I have a family to support, I have a mortgage, and uh, there's no income, and uh, then, then, then it's very difficult the first three years. But the question you have to continue to persist. See, when I quit 1974, I didn't know I developed a pneumonia. I didn't have it insurance, I couldn't see teeth, I couldn't see the doctor. So I have pneumonia, it lasts for a few months. And one of my students, they learned Tai Chi Chen with me in Connecticut. They come to see me, he say, you look awful. I say, I don't know why my temperature going up and going down, coming up, going down. He said, wait, wait. He went home to bring the, what do you call this one, to listen to my, my, my law. Yeah, it, I don't know, there's a Western terminology. I'm not that good, <laughs> medical terminology. But he said, you have pneumonia. He said, how long you have? I said, about three, four months. He said, oh, you should be dead by now. Yeah. Once I know I have a pneumonia, I contact my brother. My brother, he's a dentist. Because in America, you, you need doctor to get a prescription. But once my brother knows, because he's doctor in Taiwan, he get medicine sent to me. 
after I take medicine two weeks later, the temperature going down. And that year, 1984, November, I published my first book by myself. Okay, in order to get a book at that time, it's not like same thing today. Yeah, you have to, I went to Harvard University to learn how to do typesetting. Okay, then you typeset it, and you have to cut it, and uh, you have to shoot photo, and uh, I have a dark room, I have to develop it and print it. After print it, it pasted it. Every 16 pages, one sheet. And uh, after sheets, big sheets, after that, you take it to the printer, and printer, after they make a photos, and then they, they fold it and cut it. It take a long space, long, long, long time to finish one book. That's how it started. And uh, at that time, uh, I was along, my, I was janitor, I was a writer, I was a teacher, I was everything. And uh, some students come to help me. Yeah, until until one of the students, he quit his, uh, his college, come to help me, jump in to help me to develop the market. That's a David Ray Bianzi. He's a new owner of YMA Publishing because I trust him, period. Because he can say, okay, I don't care, my, but I can come to help you. Then help the YMA establish. Without him, I would say, is it very difficult or even impossible? Yeah, because he have the commitments from his heart. I couldn't pay him. I told him at the beginning, I couldn't pay you. He said, no problem, no problem. Yeah, so every book he sell, I pay him percentage, but you know, that's not enough. Yeah, yeah. now when I when I decide to retire from publishing, I asked him, say, no, you take over your company. So now he did a good job. So far, he took over for almost 18 years now. He did a good job. Yeah, he's still publishing good quality book. Yeah. Okay. Of course, in order to survive, you had to publish some easy book too. Yeah. So see, that's a roughly my history. I shortened it. So <laughs> well, you know, I, I wanted to say just on a personal note that, you know, I grew up in a very rural area and there wasn't a lot of access to a lot of martial arts uh, period. So, you know, having your books and having your videos available for, for a lot of people who live in parts of the world where there isn't instruction is, is a, been a, a lot of life changing thing. Yeah, because because my intention of writing book is not just a little to learn. I want to share without without hesitation. I want to share what I know. So I try to write as clear as possible. So all the book I aim it is for self-destruction. So people they don't help me, they can learn from the video, they can learn from the book. I don't say hundred percent level, certain levels. Right. But the question, the one thing missing, because teacher have an experience. You home have the experience. Teacher already passed through the experience. Experience is important. But question, that experience, as long as you're on the right path, you can develop the experience by yourself. Remember, I have a Tai Chi Chan only two and a half years with Master Gao. He helped me build a foundation. But how come people ask me, how come your Tai Chi Chan is so deep today? That's because I have to teach myself. And all I did is I got from documents and analyzed them, understand them, and try to use that. And the once you keep writing, keep writing, you're understanding your level. Because understanding the theory is a map. You have a map, then you can go anywhere you want to. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they don't want to read the map. They say, okay, I take off. Then they go to the swamp. They go to get eaten by alligator, whatever. Right. <laughs> See, but that's uh, that's why in my book, hopefully I can guide people. But I want to remind everybody, when they read my book, put a big question mark, everything I said. Yeah, because it's still my personal experience, my personal opinion. Yeah, every book they read, everything they hear is only individual's personal opinion. It's only for your reference. It's not for you to blindly believe. If you blindly believe, no, it, gone, it won't get deeper. But if you, for your reference, stimulate, inspire your thinking. Once you say, oh, I see, then it's yours. Otherwise, still mine. You pay the money, I got the money. That's it. I got royalty, but royalty is not that much. Yeah, I write a lot of book. The royalty enough for me to survive. That's it. I'm not that rich because the, the book market, yes, it translates into 11 languages, but at the same time, a lot of uh, a lot of countries, they don't pay royalties, like Russia. They sign a contract, they sign an agreement, they never pay a penny. Uh, and my book in Russia has been translated, and it's very popular in Russia, but I got no penny. Yeah, that's a today's world. <laughs> they call it the world, yeah. So, 
So I write it because I teach myself, I learn. So if I, I write it to survive or make money I like that, um, I'll be discouraged. Yeah. Because no income. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you talking to me today. Before we before we wrap it up, is there anything that you'd like to uh, promote as far as um, your your seminars and projects that you have going on right now? And well, because um, I'm 76, so I don't know how many more years can teach. Yeah, but I moved from this research center I saw it last year. Right. So because this one is a remote and uh, they're hard to get a hospital because now for my age and, and I don't know what's going to happen. And it's hard to get supplied, and especially the program finished already. And me and my wife are long, so we moved to McKenneville. So McKenneville, there's, this house is smaller. So I still offer some seminar because I need some income. Okay, and also I like to interface with people, their interest in Qigong, I still want to share, but I cannot. And also I cannot travel too much. See, so far I only travel to Chile, Argentina, and Boston, maybe Indianapolis, only a few places. Europe, I don't go for many years already because it's not easy when you get older because, and you should travel, teach, travel, teach, travel, teach. Before you think about it, go back to 15 years ago, I went to Europe twice a year, each time six weeks, go six countries. Mm -hmm. And I go to South America once a year. Yeah, about each time about four weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And uh, it's very tiring. And not only that, when I come back to the United States, now I have a seminar in the United States everywhere. And the United States, you, know, you go back to that time, you want to book my seminar, you have to book two years ahead because uh, you cannot book next year, you'll book. So that's the that's situation. But now, now I come to the stage now, I have to watch my health because at that time, I, I have a high blood pressure. I have all things because I'm so busy and depressed because uh, it's a lot of pressure. But the time to survive because my kids still in the college, they need courage and uh, they need survive, whatever. Yeah. But nowadays I'm more relaxing because my kids all grow up now. I don't, I don't have to babysit them too much now. So I, so now I'm, I'm waiting, waiting to go. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why I still share whatever, and then I enjoy to meet the old friends, you know, talk to old friends. So that's why I still open my house for people come to visit if they want to visit and they want to take my seminar summertime. Like this uh, this summer, we have uh, four seminars Tai Chi Chen, Tai Chi Sword. That's uh, one seminar, and uh, they have to choose one. And the second one is uh, Pushing Hand and uh, Fighting Set. That's another one. And after the medical Qigong and the Qigong grand secretion, there are four weeks. So again, I can take only 10 to 15 people for, for, for this or to host them. Yeah, so if, if people are interested, they can visit my website. It's very easy because youngjimmin.com. Okay. Yeah, name.com, that's it. Okay, so yeah, welcome your people to come. They, they better register soon because uh, most of the good space are already taken. Okay, but uh, welcome if they come. I like to meet new people, but serious new people. No right. people come here to uh, to give me headache. <laughs> hey, Bill, thank you for Dr. Nong, thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, it, it's been a pleasure.